people, super successful people, tend to write down their goals. I can see the whole wide world with these two eyes And I can be whoever I want to be Cause it's my life Hi, thanks for joining us for another episode of Ask Spurl CPA. Today, as the Edmonton Business Consultant, we're talking about business plan benefits. Again, as the Edmonton Business Consultant, we're talking about business plan benefits. I have Tyson here with me from the office. Tyson, how are you doing today? I'm good. Yeah, had a great weekend. Excellent. So Tyson, how long have you been here now? Uh, two and a half years, two, almost to the day. <laughs> two and a half years to the day. Oh wow, time flies, hey? So <laughs> the the quote that we have here, it's a Benjamin Franklin quote, you know, one of the founding fathers of the United States. He says, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And the statistic that we, we always like to use when it comes to business plan is from Palo Alto. Um, and they say businesses who complete a business plan are 50% more likely to grow their revenue the businesses that don't complete a business plan. And the story that we have, we see it over and over, is, is the number one problem that we see in businesses is the inability to grow revenues. And when we talk to those struggling business owners, we find that they don't have a concrete plan to rectify the problem. So Tyson, what do you think the questions that these business owners should be asking? Yeah, first, do successful people normally write down their goals? Yeah, from you know, whenever I hear about people that are super successful people, you know, the the, the best of the best, the one percent, um, and and they normally almost to a person say that they've written down their goals, and some of them have a, have written down very long term goals. I mean, even even people outside of the business, you think of the the uh, the the Jim Carrey story where he, he said he wrote himself a check for ten million dollars to be an actor, <laughs> and, and one day he got ten, paid ten million dollars. Uh, to be an actor, um, and and that goes across you know industry to industry. People, super successful people, tend to write down their goals. Mm -hmm. Is it easy to lose sight of the big picture when dealing with day to day business? Yeah, so day to day business is tough. You're going to have an, an kind of a innumerable amount of problems. Uh, you know, things are going to uh, creep up that you didn't expect. You know, you can have. You know, problems with uh, customers and problems with staff and problems with suppliers and you know things are just you know you're gonna have problems with weather you know you talk about these landscapers now in Edmonton a lot of them are, are a little bit behind because of the rain right um, so there, there's going to be things that are going to creep up all the time and when you're dealing with these day-to-day -day issues it is very, very easy to lose sight of the big picture and you get too involved in the things that are you know, important for the minute mm -hmm. and you become completely disconnected with the things, you know, the big strategic initiatives that are really going to drive the business forward. Yeah. Okay. Should you establish what sets you apart from your competitors in the plan? Yeah, I think that this is your opportunity to really, you know, not just look at, you know, what you're doing, but look around and look what your competitors are doing. And the business plan is an opportunity to really compare yourself to your competitors. And you have to see, you know, what they do well um, and really hone in and be honest about what you do well and what, what are the things that you can do that you could outperform them. And you can't be everything to everyone, but you really want to identify, you know, what are the things realistically that you can do better than your competition or what are the things that you want to work towards being able to do better than your competition. Okay. Should you assign specific dates to strategic milestones in the plan? Yeah, yeah. So here's the one where, you know, these are things, you have your day to day, your repeatable monthly calendar that we always go on about. You've got to have your repeatable monthly calendar when you do specific items. But there's going to be some things in the business plan that maybe aren't, uh, they're more one time in nature. You know, if you want to relaunch your website, if you need to, you know, get a new leased space or build out a lease premise or, you know, hire additional staff. Um, these things are more, you know, they're one time in nature and they're going to change the entire metrics of the business, the entire financial performance of the business. And they're things that you should actually put on a calendar, not just say you're going to do them, but say you're going to do them by specific dates. Uh, because often what happens is we have to, you know, spread some of those initiatives out or else they don't, they don't really make any sense in real life. So you want to be assigning, you know, specific dates to strategic milestones in the plan. Okay. Will monthly cash flow projections reduce those second most 
common business risk? Yeah, second most common business risk is people running out of cash. You know, 29% of all failed entrepreneurs list running out of cash as one of the primary reasons of, you know, their, their business not succeeding. And doing those monthly cash flow projections in a business plan, looking critically of what, what is likely to happen in a conservative fashion, um, that's really going to reduce the risk that you're going to run out of cash because you're going to be able to make realistic projections of what will happen, what won't happen, and are you going to have enough money to pay things as they come on a month-to-month -month basis. But it's different than planning on an annual basis. On an annual basis, maybe it makes sense, but at the end of the year, you might have the cash to pay. But you know, sometimes your suppliers or employees, they don't want to wait till the end of the year to get paid. They want to get paid as you go along. So the the month to month cash flow projections in a business plan are incredibly important. Okay. Do you believe one page business canvases are as effective? I don't. I don't believe one page business canvases are effective. I'm not just saying that they're ineffective. They might be a good starting point. They're they're a good you know better than on the napkin type. Uh, business plan. They're, they're something, they're a good starting point. Um, but let's look at, you know, there's only so many things that you can put on a canvas. You know, you're not going to have a monthly cash flow projection looking out 12, 24, 36 months. That's not going to happen on a one page business canvas. Um, you know, I, I know they're, they're teaching it a lot in educational institutions now, the one page business canvas, but but you know, what do you think, Tyson, what do you think happens if you hand in a one page business canvas to the Royal Bank or Scotia Bank and ask for a million bucks? Do you think they're gonna lend you the million bucks? Oh, they're gonna laugh at it. <laughs> they're going to laugh at it, yeah. So uh, I think that's that's forgotten a little bit. So the, those one page business canvases, you know, they're either, in my view, they're, ju they're just a starting point. Eventually you need to get to a formal business plan. Okay. Do you need a business plan to do it? A business degree to do a plan. No, I, I don't think so. You you know that we need something better than a canvas, and we can't have this one page canvas. But at the same time, we also don't need a business degree. You know, you don't need an MBA or a BCom in order to do a business plan. It's a very you know um, straightforward and logical step by step process. In fact, if you're in the industry, you're probably more qualified to do the business plan than someone with a business degree who's not in the industry, uh, you're just going to have better insight as to you know what you're doing versus what your competitors are doing and what's your value proposition. Uh, so 100% you don't have to think that you know business, just because you don't have a business degree doesn't mean a business plan isn't for you. It's something that we can definitely you know walk people through. Mm -hmm. Do you need hours and hours to do a plan? I don't think you do need hours and hours to do a plan. I think if you do it um, you know, in an efficient manner, we always tell people here that you, outside of the meetings that you have at our office, you need about four hours to, I think, to do a good job on it and to really, you know, put your vision into the business plan. You know, mm -hmm. the business plan, it's not a sales document. And a lot of people, I think they, they assemble these business plans because they think it's a sales document and they spend hours and hours putting the logo in the right, <laughs> on the front page when no one's ever going to see it other than the business owner. Um, yeah, I, I think you, you need about four hours and I think that time is, you know, um, the, you can use other time more efficiently. Okay. Should you redo your business plan every year? I, I do. I, you know, I, I, I tell people that four hour business plan and I, I say, you know, you're better off spending four hours a year than 40 hours in your first year and never doing it again. Because there's just so many things that you're going to learn as you operate your business each and every year. You know, in year five, you're going to know so many more things than you knew in year one. It doesn't matter how much time you spend on planning in year one, you just won't see these things coming because you just don't know it yet. Like you just haven't learned all the ins and outs, all the things that can go wrong, all the little tricks that that will work. So you really should be taking that knowledge that you've learned every year and taking another big picture analysis and say, how can I get ahead of my competition? You know, what have I learned? You know, what, what is my strategy to outperform my competition? That's why I think you should be redoing that business plan each and every year because simply you're more qualified to do so each and every year you stick around. Right. When you do that business plan, should you ever do it by yourself? I don't think business owners should do business plans by themselves. I think they need someone else to look at it. Now, ideally, they can hire a, a CPA firm like us who is uh, familiar with doing a business plan. But even in the absence of that, I think they should get their most financially sophisticated friend to look at it. Uh, because I think a lot of those projections that they end up doing, you know, what I always recommend to people is you put your vision into the business plan and you have someone else do the projections thereon. 
um, because or else there's that there tends to be that disconnect in between the vision and, and what reality is. So I, I tell people that you know you want to put your vision into the business plan and really explain how, you know what that vision is and exactly how you're going to execute it. You know specifically by tying numbers to uh, advertising initiatives, tying you know. Uh, specific times in the day for you know when you're going to do uh, various tasks to give a significance of what the capacity is and what the potential is and then have someone else from an objective viewpoint you know step back and do realistic projections uh, on those plans and then you can you know input in after those realistic projections have happened so I think you know uh, doing those projections, they they tend to be disconnected from reality because the business <laughs> owners are in their own little world about you know where they're going to be ten years from now. Um, so I think that's what we have here today. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, you know please hit the like and subscribe buttons so we can continue to deliver you tips on how to beat the odds at business. And as always, you know please feel free to leave us some comments so we can respond back and use your input for future videos. Thanks very much.